Hello, and thank you for watching this tutorial. Today we're going to look at a couple of effects that I feel are not properly represented in Premiere, and those are vignette and photo filter. So the vignette effect will look something like this, and we've got a bit of a contrast boost on here as well, and we'll talk about that. And the photo filter does that. It brings a little bit of color in, in variant different ways. So that's what we're going to do. Now let's do it. Let's get rid of those and start from scratch. Vignetting is what happens on wider lenses and older cameras, and it's that roll-off at the edge of the frame that is a little bit out of focus, and it's a little bit darker than the rest of the image. It gives it this more organic feel. Now modern cameras and modern lenses um, are, are minimizing vignette, and sometimes you want to get that feeling back. You want that kind of older organic feeling. And we're going to achieve that older organic feeling by using a lot of digital effects. So let's get right into it. Um, first thing you want to do is go down to New Item and click on Adjustment Layer. It'll automatically be the same size as your composition, so you can click OK and then you can drag and drop it in. Now, one thing you want to be sure to do is to extend this filter over all your footage or else some shots will be vignetted and some will not and you're trying to get this to be an in-camera effect so it should be the same over every shot that you took for the film. Alright, what do we do? First thing we want to do is uh, darken the edges of the frame. So we're going to do that using a luma curve, very, very handy tool. The luma curve is useful in darkening or brightening the image quickly and efficiently. Today we are darkening, and it's, it's okay. For this one, it's okay if you crunch your blacks. How we're doing down here, you wouldn't really want to do that, but don't worry about it for today. Now you'll notice that the entire image has been darkened, and that's not exactly what we want. So let's go over to the masks we're going to create an ellipse mask. You can make it the size of your image by dragging these square handles and stretching it out. Now you'll notice that there are two problems with this mask. The first thing is that um, the inside is dark and the outside is light. We want exactly the opposite and you'll also notice that there is a hard edge around the mask, and we want something much softer, much more gradient, as if it was made from the glass in the lens, not as if it was made from a digital machine. So let's click on that, and let's select. Well, first let's um, let's get the the brightness thing corrected by clicking invert. You reverse the mask, so now everything inside is unaffected by our luma curve, and everything outside of that mask is affected. Next thing we want to do is smooth the hard edge, and you do this by selecting the mask, and you might need to zoom out a bit so that you have this gray area around your frame to work. Now these control the gradient edge of your mask. So what we're going to do is pull that out, and now our gradient stretches from here to here. So anything past this dotted line is unaffected and anything outside of this line would be completely affected, and everything in between moves on a gradient. Let's move that out a bit, and let's shrink our gradient down. Let's go right about there. Let's see how that looks. Now, of course, I encourage you to futz around with this as much as you like and kind of get a feeling that, that is most appropriate for what you want. Don't feel as if you are stuck with what I'm doing in this tutorial. Um, let's toggle that off and on. And you'll see that we've got this nice little roll off at the edges. It has that kind of um, lensy feel. I think we could use a little bit more like that. And like that. Oops, sorry. Now let's take a look at that with and without. Without and with. That's looking pretty good. That's That's got a good feeling to it. Um, another effect of these 
vignettes is that the edge of the lens would be blurred. So let's get our Gaussian blur going. Drop it on there. You can close this up now. And you can crank this, like, you can kind of go crazy, don't worry about it. Now you'll notice around the edges we've got this um, unwanted darkness that is a result of the edge pixels not being repeated. So what we're going to do is click Repeat Edge Pixels, and now the blur extends to the very edge of our frame much, much better. And we are going to do a similar mat. I want this one to be a little bit different. I'm going to make this mat smaller because I want it to feel like we were using cheaper glass that had a, a smaller area of sharpness on it. Um, let's invert that mask and let's play with our roll off. And you see, we can bring this in very, very close, so only the very center is sharp. And this is kind of getting a, a plastic lens feel. This is on the cusp of lamography. I don't want it to be that extreme. So let's get this mask and... There we go. Do it more like this. Okay, that feels good. We've got a good space of, of sharp image, and then it rolls off into softer image on the edge. Now, um, for this, this, this image is not a perfect representation of what we're doing for the softening. So let's go over here, and you can really see uh, this softening happening. You'll notice all the sharpness on his forehead is just brought down to almost nothing, but we still retain the sharpness in his hair. Um, this one, this image is more to focus on the brightness of the vignette because we have these, these light leaks on the edge. All right, that's looking pretty good. One thing I would like to do though is boost the contrast of our core shot. So, boost that contrast quite a bit. We want to make this extreme. We really want to go for a, a hard edge, kind of intense feel for this. So we're blasting the contrast and we'll bring the brightness down to get some of that detail. We're blowing out a lot in the skins there. So we'll bring the brightness down. Not bad at all. That has a really rich intense feel, but you'll notice that it's also got a very, very blue feel, and that's not maybe what we're going for today. So let's do the simple photo filter first, and then we'll do a more complicated photo filter second. The simple way, go to new item, color matte, um, automatically it is the size of your composition, beautiful, and because this is blue, we're going to go with a red filter so you can really see the impact that this can have. Um, click OK, and we'll call this Red Extreme. And we'll drag and drop that on top. That does not look good at all, so click on this, go up to your effect controls, and let's adjust our opacity. I like multiply for this effect, and ba-bam, that's looking pretty intense. Now that's maybe a bit too red for your needs, so we can adjust the opacity, and that will adjust the intensity of the filter. Keep it more, I keep it at 70, 80, 100 is way too much. It looks like he's under a, a food heater at a restaurant. You can also play with different um, blending modes. Let's see what happens when we darken. Okay, not much. Let's go to screen. Very different effect, very interesting effect. Uh, let's go to overlay. Again, very different and interesting. So you can play around with this and kind of get a feeling for the different effects that you can create using this photo filter. Now, this is a very simple photo filter and I don't feel like it's enough. I feel like we can do more and we can but we're not going to do it with a color mat. This time, 
we're going to do it with a title. I know this doesn't seem like the most intuitive place to build a photo filter, but you'll see why we're doing it this way in a minute. Go to new title, default still. Um, let's call this gradient filter. Now, if you're smart, you may have already guessed exactly what we're going to do up here. Um, instead of using any of the text tools, we're going to go to the rectangle tool and just drag and drop it. Make sure it's bigger than the frame. If you have any exposed corners, it'll look really bad. So just drag this over your entire frame and get rid of the previous image. Let's go for red, just so you can see what we're doing in comparison to the last thing. And we're going to drop that gradient filter over red extreme. And oh golly, totally useless as it is. Let's move it to multiply. All right. Now what you'll notice is we have created the exact same thing. Whether we use the uh, color mat or the text tool, the end result is identical. But there are more tools in the text editor than there are in the color mat. And we can find them over here at fill. We want to go to fill type and we're going to go with linear gradient. Let's make one of them blue and the other red because contra. Now you'll notice that the uh, gradient portion is kind of extreme and it's locked in the middle. If you drag these closer together, you'll get a sharper gradient. If you pull them farther apart, you get a much smoother gradient. We want to go with the smoother effect. So let's close this window and see what's happened to our footage. Now this is interesting. Let's leave that there. And I'm going to bring the brightness up because we're losing some of this effect. Now what you're seeing is a really rich, deep blue at the top and a really rich, deep red at the bottom and this gradient purple in the middle. It's an interesting effect and one that you can't achieve with the color matte. Let's go a little deeper. Let's try a radial gradient and see how that goes. We'll pinch them together. Let's make that blue really small and at the center. And now we have a very extreme blue circle in the middle and it bleeds out almost immediately into a, a red on the edge. I wonder if we could make the flag of Japan with this. Um, we'll make that center red, and the edge we will make white. Very interesting. Now we have this kind of flag of Japan feel. And we can make it crazy if we want. Let's go to screen and see what happens there. Overlay. So you see you've got it, you, you have a lot of options here that might not be immediately apparent without digging a bit. Let's go for a four color gradient. Let's round this off with something horrendously ugly. Let's go for a neon green. And let's go for a mustard yellow. And let's go for a purple. And let's go for just a blue over here, midnight blue. Let's have one nice color, a deep, nice blue. All right, now that is kind of gross looking. Let's see what it's done to our image. That's not too bad. Thought it would be worse. There's something really vile. That's kind of cool. All right. So I hope you feel like that gives you a brief introduction to these different tools. There's one more thing to mention before we close this tutorial out, and that is that this works perfectly on footage. However, you'll notice on my timeline, there are some areas where the film dissolves into black and then it comes back up. Um, what I've got on this bottom track, V1, is black video. If you don't have that there, if you have no visual information on your track, it will 
uh, show you the gradient that you built. So this fades in, then it fades out to black, but it's not really black, it just looks like black because nothing's there. It's actually uh, fully transparent. It's, it's an alpha nothing. So what we need to do is create a black video so that this adjustment layer has something to work against. Right now it has nothing to work against, so the subtract isn't subtracting from anything. The multiply isn't multiplying from anything. But if we take, uh, if we create a black video track, then it's multiplying from black, which means it will not show up, and then you get a nice fade to black. Uh, creating a black video track is very easy. Go down to new item, and black video. Click OK, drag it in, and put it underneath all your footage, so that if there is a fade in and a fade out, you won't get that, you'll fade out to black, like so. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, any type of tutorial that you think you'd like to see that maybe we can tackle, please leave them in the comments. Um, we really enjoy doing these, as evidenced by the fact that we've only done one. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.